So, on this project, I decided to connect drones to a population of neural networks and see if they could evolve the ability to herd a flock of boids through a course. Inspired by real-life footage of this in action, I had to get some floating sheep heads and some sprites involved as well. Once the networks discovered they could terrify the boids into jumping a fence, well, that became the preferred approach for everything. As I seemed to already have all the components I thought I'd need from some of my earlier projects, I decided to give it a go. And thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. First up, of course, I'll need the boids. This is the same code I used on earlier projects on this topic, but instead of using thousands of them in different flocks with predator boids flying around and quad tree data structures keeping the frame rate in check, I'll just be using a handful. And their movement, of course, is governed by the standard coherence, separation, and alignment functions, which give rise to the emergent flocking behavior which typifies the boids' experience. Next, I'll need a drone and a neural network. And to start with, I'll set up the task of chasing the boids around the screen. But first, what's a neural network? And this is where Brilliant, the sponsor of this video, can help. Brilliant is a website and app that teaches you all kinds of STEM concepts from computer science through to astrophysics. There is a lot of interactivity in their courses to assist in getting core concepts across. Getting started is free and they have courses for all ability and knowledge levels. The neural network topic is one they cover in a lot of detail. I spent the past couple of weeks going through them, reskilling on some of the topics I've worked on before, and learning new skills in the areas of network optimization and how best to apply matrices to improve performance. The interactive components really do help to reinforce key points. I got my start with training backpropagation networks to recognize images and handwriting samples. And Brilliant provides you with the knowledge you need. You can learn how to do it for yourself. Most of my coding these days is done in Python. It's an excellent and very relevant first language for new programmers. The interactive course on Brilliant covers all the basics you'll need to know to get started. Loops, functions, variables, and data visualization topics are covered in great detail. Python is the language used to create the wonderful creatures that emerged from the Lenia universe. First 200 people to use the link in my description will get 20% off their annual membership. So, for inputs to the network, I'll use the X and Y coordinates of the drone, but I'll divide them by the screen width and height to give a value between 0 and 1. This is the same input used initially in the project, which used neural networks to visualize the impact of adjusting the topology of a network, and projected that as an image, and subtracting 0.5 from the input value moves the input range to negative 0.5 to plus 0.5. The other input is the average X and Y coordinates of the Boyd's flock, scaled to the same range. For the output, I'm going to use two nodes. They'll give me the delta X and Y for the drone's next position. It'll be a number between minus one and one, which I'll then multiply by the largest step I want the drone to take along either axis. Of course, I'm going to need a population of networks, which should hopefully, over time, evolve the ability to accurately track the Boyd's around the screen. This population will be steered by a fitness function and make use of a genetic algorithm and a crossover step to ensure those networks are best adapted to solving the problem with the best chance of passing on their genetic material to the next generation. And it'll be using the NEAT algorithm, which allows for speciation and also a mutation step, which can accommodate adding nodes and new connections to a network's topology. I also have elitism switched on, which means that the best performer gets promoted to position one in the population and remains there until another network gets a better score. The elite member is never mutated, but does take part in the speciation and crossover processes, so its genetic predispositions are made available when the next generation is being produced. And it's this top performer that I track and display. But running in parallel, of course, are another 19 drones with their own instances of boids, and that's the population that are trying to plonk themselves on top of the unpredictable boid flock. All of the steps used here to evolve a champion are detailed in full in earlier videos and playlists, so please do check them out. Of course, when I initialize the population, I need to decide on the initial topology of the networks. I have the inputs and outputs already, but how many hidden nodes to use? Well, the more the merrier, right? If you take this approach of just piling nodes on to start with, you're going to get one jittery, over-caffeinated drone brain. This is because there's no valid reason for them to be there. None of those hidden nodes have proven that they add any value. So they just add noise. The best approach is to start with no hidden nodes and let them get added during the mutation stage. This is the power of the NEAT algorithm. If a new node in a network doesn't add any value, they tend to get removed from the population fairly quickly. And as a result, you tend to get quite efficient solutions to problems in terms of their topology. This means that you can generally avoid the dreaded network bloat.
You can see here, as the generations go by, the drone is learning to get as close as possible to the buoyed flock. This behavior is steered by the fitness function I'm using to determine which of the drones is doing the best. I was going to use something simple, like the distance to the flock, but as I'm messing about with continuous evolutionary systems at the moment, I decided to give each drone an energy value of 10,000 units. This will decrease unless the buoy is within a certain distance of the flock, and increase if it gets close enough. It drops to zero, then the drone dies. Its value at the end of the generation is then used as its fitness. To be fair, this isn't a difficult problem to solve, and normally does it without the need for any hidden nodes in the final solution. Sometimes it'll add one in. All it needs to do is move on top of the buoys and then adjust its delta x and y to follow them around the screen. I've given it a slight speed advantage, so it has no problem with keeping up. I even played around with giving the neural nets two drones to control. This involved adding another couple of inputs for the second drone's location, and another couple of outputs to control its movements. At some point, I'm going to strap some lasers to dozens of these drones and let them fight it out. But that's for another video. So if I want to herd the boids, I'm going to need a few other things. First of all, I'm going to need some coarse boundaries. When the boids get close to a wall, a turn factor is introduced to their delta V, which causes them to steer away from it. I now also have a function called avoid boundaries, which strongly urges the boids to steer away from the walls. However, I also need to make the boids run away from the drone. To do this, I simply make use of the code in the object avoidance routine which caused those large flocks to flow around objects. This is the exact same code as the coherence function. I just reverse it. So instead of being attracted to a location, the boys want to avoid it. Now if I scale up the avoidance factor, the drone will shove the boys around once it gets close enough. If you want to get all academic about it, do check out this paper which treats the boys as sheep and introduces a predator to the mix. It introduces the concept of an escape rule and applies a weighting value to the rules so they can be prioritized differently by the routines. At some stage, I might code this up as well and see if I can replicate the results. The path to the target is one of those things I'll need to know as I'll be using the length of this path as a component in the fitness function of the drones. The closer the herd gets to the target, the fitter the controlling drone is deemed to be. To set this up, I've decided to reuse the code from the simplified flow field video. This establishes a grid, the elements of which I store in a two-dimensional array. In it, I record the X and Y coordinates of each cell, the cell type, was it a wall or a regular cell, and of course, its flow field value. I've set it up so that clicking and dragging the mouse around will set the cell type to that of a wall. Setting a target is as simple as double-clicking anywhere on screen. The selected coordinate is simply divided by the cell width to get the grid array reference. The flow field for that entry is set to zero. That's the target. So with the target location assigned a value of zero and its immediate neighbors assigned a value of one, I then circle outwards from the target and add an ever-increasing value for each neighbor encountered. The neighboring cell is set as a wall. It simply gets ignored and the routine moves past it and this continues until the edge of the grid is reached. Any object placed on the grid will simply have to check its eight neighboring cells and move to the one with the lowest field value in each frame of the game. This will automatically cause them to flow towards the target grid point. This approach does away with the need for individual path to target calculations, and placing thousands of objects on the grid is easily handled. I've applied a heat map to aid visualizing what's happening. Any area showing as red is an area with the longest path back to the target. Extending it out to larger and larger grids, you can see it scales just fine. Determining the distance of the flock back to the target is then a simple matter of getting the average location of all voids and checking the grid array for the flow field value at that point. Drawing the full path back would look like this. As I increase the complexity of the courses, the routine has no issue finding the path back to the target. Of course, the voids know nothing about this path and it's not used for anything in this case. All that I want is the flow field value for the flock back to the target for use in the fitness function. In the initial setup, I decided to combine the energy value of the drone, scaled to a value between 0 and 1, with the inverse of the distance to the target and use that as its fitness function. I'll also use a weight element so I can set the importance of each component within the fitness function. Overall, I want the drone to be biased towards achieving the goal of herding the boids towards their target. It's less important for the drone to now hover over the flock. Setting up a simple course and letting it run, and you get this. As the generations pass, different strategies tend to emerge from the full-on charge and chase to the more nuanced nudge and wait. Complex solutions tend to not survive long. Extra nodes never seem to add enough value to ensure they persist over the generations. And of course, as sheep kept cropping up as I was doing this project, I just had to download a few sprites and a butcher's van. 
to what you call a sheep void combo. An online search threw up a few suggestions. Their very nature tends to make the beeps quite adventurous, so I corralled them in a pen. Of course, sitting behind the colourful sprites is the same grid with the walls defined to line up with the fences, roads, bridges and water features. I've also removed one component of the fitness function just to see what it would do. The drone no longer cares how close it is to the beep. The population now evolves, driven simply by how close it can get the herd to the truck. They quite rapidly discover that they need to get the beeps out of the pen. The drones that manage that first, of course, are deemed to be fitter than the others, and then it's simply a case of sitting back and watching the generations roll by. As always, thanks for watching.